Hello and welcome to Life Over 60 with Sandra. No one gets everything in life, but most of us get just what is enough. When I am old, I will awake before dawn, slide into my boots and put my old straw hat on. I'll throw a saddle on my chestnut mare and we will gallop, gallop across the glistening morning blue grass, racing, racing to greet the rising morning sun. Welcome. This is Sandra Hart, and I'm so happy to have you with me. Thank you so much. Welcome to all of my new subscribers. And if you are new to this channel, if you have just discovered me, I would love to have you push the subscribe button and join us all in this journey that we are taking. And you know, I never say give me a thumbs up, but it would be nice if you would do that too. All right. Today we're going to be visiting with Sophia Lauren. <laughs> Not really, but I'm going to tell you about a very interesting documentary that I watched on Netflix the other day. It was about a woman named Nancy Kulik. She is of uh, Italian descendancy, and she just absolutely finds great joy in Sophia Lauren her whole life. In the documentary, she opens it up and she tells all of us, when I was having problems in life, or trying to talk to my children, I would sit down and I would say, now what would Sophia Lauren do? <laughs> I thought that was absolutely so interesting. I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I never really had a, a mentor that would be a, a screen star, although I did like Esther Williams. But I never thought as an adult to sit down and say, hey, Esther, <laughs> help me out here. What am I going to, what, what should I do next? But the documentary, I'm going to put the link down below, was really fun and very, very interesting. And I learned a lot about Sophia Lauren as well. Anyway, I did some research and I found out some very famous quotes that Sophia Lauren did. So I thought maybe we're going to have a conversation with her and see if what she thinks may be kind of right down our alley what we think too. So, Sophia, I have her here. No, 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 that's the wrong Sophia. That's the younger Sophia. I want the older Sophia. Okay, there she is. This, hi, Sophia, that's the, that's the older Sophia. The first thing that Sophia said, she said, nothing makes a woman more beautiful than thinking she is beautiful. Haven't we talked about that before? Beauty, you are what you think you are, and beauty comes from within. So I agree with Sophia 100%. There are all types of beauty in this world. Each culture has their a standard of beauty. Uh, there, there are different types of beauty. That men like all kinds of women, tall women, short women, heavy women, curvy women, thin women. You know, beauty can be all types, and we all are unique, and each of us has our unique beauty. But I agree with her 100%. You are what you think. If you think you're ugly, you're going to represent and translate ugly. If you think you are beautiful, you're going to translate beautiful. And if you think you are old, you are going to look old in other people's eyes. And it has nothing to do with wrinkles or gray hair. It has to do with the projection that you present to the world. So bravo, Sophia. If I had asked what you would do or what you would say, I would absolutely agree with you on that one. The next one she has said, and I quote, mistakes are part of the dues of living a life. And I have to say, I agree with her 
we all make mistakes. I've made mistakes, and I'm sure if you look back in your past, you've made mistakes too, and you say, ugh, why did I do that? But if we learn from those mistakes, it makes us a better person, doesn't it? Now, if we keep making the same mistake over and over and over again, we're on like a, a, a guinea pig on a treadmill or one of those little things they run around on. But if we make mistakes and we say, you know what, why did I do that? I'm not going to do that again. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to move forward and I'm going to learn from it. Well, that's what life is all about, isn't it? It's growth. It's learning by our mistakes. It's patting ourselves on the back for the wonderful things that we've done. And I agree with her. How about you? I think that is absolutely true. No life is perfect. And whatever happens to us, that makes us better moving forward if we learn from it. Another thing she said, and you have to read into this, if you haven't cried, your eyes are not beautiful. And my translation from that quote is, if you have not suffered, if you have not felt pain, you won't be as empathetic you probably won't be as kind and understanding of other people's problems, will you? Because if you don't know what adversity is like, how are you going to understand it? How are you going to emphasize it? And nobody has a perfect life, as I've said about 2,000 times. So if we haven't cried, if we haven't had pain, if we haven't had heartache, then we're just skimming on the top of life because that pain, that heartache, those trials make us stronger and they make us better human beings. And I agree with her on that as well. Where was she when I was needing all this advice anyway? Another thing she said, and as a mother, I agree with her, Whenever you are a mother, you have to think twice. Now, what does she mean about that? Whenever you are a mother, you have to think twice. You have to think once for yourself, and then you have to think again for them. And that is true. Everything that we do in our lives, if we are mothers and raising young children, even with adult children, whatever decisions we make also affect them but especially when we're raising our children. I know in my lifetime, I probably made decisions only thinking about me and then later on thinking, wow, was, was that good? Was that good for my children? I think this probably is one of the wisest things she has ever said. We do have to consider when we're responsible for someone else. And this could be if you are responsible for, you know, your, your husband, for caretaking your mother who has come to live with you, or a parent who is elderly, whatever decision you make in your life, you have to think also, I am responsible for that person, and is my decision also going to affect them? How? Positively or negatively? And I think that really is a very wise, wise thing, and I wish I would have had Sophie around when I was younger to guide me on that one. For sure, you have to enjoy your life, she quotes. Surround yourself with people you like. We've talked about that before, haven't we? Get rid of all the negative people in your life. Surround yourself with like minds, with people who believe in you, with people who are not putting you down, but who are lifting you up. And that is really going to lead you to living a more happy and fulfilling life. I know it's hard because perhaps we have a negative spouse, a negative brother or sister or friends that maybe poo-poo stuff you're doing and who are not always positive about your decisions. And I know it's hard, but trust me, you either have to close out the static if you can't you know, move away from them, if you can't have distance, safe distance between social distancing between you all, 
but you can close out the static. Just pull the blind and don't listen to it anymore because you have to be happy. And in order to be happy, you have to have like people around you who believe in you. Another quote said, it's a mistake to think when you quit school that you have to stop learning. Well, we've kind of talked about that a lot. And again, I agree with Sophia. You know, we have to stop. We have to keep opening our lives, expanding, enjoying life, learning new skills, keeping our mind open to new ideas, meeting new people. Everything it, our lives are like this big ball of energy that keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. And the more we gather, the more wonderful stuff that that we <laughs> that hangs on to us that is positive, that makes us happier and it makes us younger because we're always looking forward to tomorrow and we're always looking forward to new, to learning new things. And the last thing <laughs> I really like. At my age, I really think this is awesome. She says, and I quote, being sexy is 50% you and 50% what people think you have. Sex appeal is 50% of what you have and 50% of what people think you have. So again, and it has nothing about showing your cleavage or wearing short skirts. It's what you show. It's what you exude from outside, or from inside that comes outside. If you think you are younger and sexier, that's exactly the way you will appear in other people's eyes. Sophia, you know, I think you're absolutely awesome. And I never realized that maybe throughout the years I should have been asking you questions or asking myself, hey, Sophia, what would you do in this situation? I'm going to leave you with this last quote, and this is a quote by Sophia Loren. No one in life gets everything, but most of us get enough. And I think that's absolutely true. Thank you so much for joining me today. Be good to yourself. And I hope that you will think about someone else today. Give them a ring or give them a text. And of course, that share the love. Thank you so much. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be here. Take care and I will see you in my next video.